generally myself i divide each case into a very clear and certain box so i have like lower jaw posterior area then anterior region like aesthetic area and upper jaw posterior area we clearly understand that initial situations we are absolutely different and that we need to think about some kind of uh, technique, let's say soft tissue management and lower jaw will be completely different than an upper jaw posterior area or aesthetic area. So that's why, uh, so we just divide like this and with a very clear initial situation and just to start, start to think about what technique to use. Second point is uh, end point, like our point B where we want to go. So, and here again, we want to have a bone around implant neck. We want to have soft tissue thickness vertically, horizontally, as well as keratinized and attached tissue. Again, I do not stop here. I just make a big frame, big picture. And this is my goal and uh, really like a task. Does not matter. Do I start with immediate implant placement? Do I have bone or not? Do I have soft tissue or not? So I try uh, to develop soft tissue thickness horizontally, vertically, as well as increased keratinized and attached tissue. Uh, when I have just uh, enough bone, but no soft tissue thickness, so just go for soft tissue augmentation, especially also after some bone augmentation. Again, if you have really thick, uh, thin bone and we augment bone, but do not seal it uh, with soft tissues, in a future, we are most likely to have some crestal bone loss uh, we have a problem and, and we most likely to, uh, to lose bone around implant neck and also higher incidence for uh, peri-implantitis, okay? Uh, so, so every time when we have some lag, we would like to restore soft tissues until the end, okay? So initial situations, we are different, but our goal remains all the time the same. And when we talk about soft tissue stability and crestal bone stability, well, this is uh, uh, one complex. This is what we have like around our implant neck and all dimensions on soft tissue. We have to see then very stable crestal bone, even uh, better and more stabilizing and increasing in density of uh, uh, crestal bone. So all these things, we are really very... Uh, important for us. So this is a goal, what I would like to have in the end of the day, end of my treatment before I deliver uh, my patient to prostodontist. So, and with this, with a soft tissue thickness, you may have a really very, very good uh, crystal bone stability. The crystal bone stability may be achieved very, very stable. And opposite. And opposite, just very often, even I just had enough bone around implant neck in, in, in the beginning of my treatment. Uh, after some while, we may observe some recession, some perimplantitis, uh, some crestal bone loss at least, what may lead later to perimplantitis because of uh, lack of soft tissue thickness, horizontally, vertically, as well as uh, lack of keratinized and attached tissues. This uh, histological picture illustrates it very, very well. The goal of this study was different. The authors were, uh, wanted to test what influence for crystal bone stability, uh, different uh, modification of uh, healing abutment gives uh, and, and uh, how bone behaves if on the same implant uh, uh, a narrow and wide healing abutments were used. So they found that clearly by having the wide healing abutments uh, crystal bone uh, remodeling is higher so crystal bone losses is higher. But the question is why and this is very clear explanation. So if we place a wider abutment in a subcrestally placed implants, we just make a soft tissues thinner, we move them away, and then a biological width, so-called, should be uh, just 
reestablish. And with this, we may have like uh, remodeling or crystal bone loss. And we can clearly see that protection, the soft tissue sealing on the implant neck uh, is not possible here or it's very weak. And then we are already in a, a worse situation uh, in comparison to the, the picture on the on the right side. So that's why, that's why. So this is clearly important thing. And if we have uh, soft tissues really thin around the implant neck, even by having a lot of bone, usually we will be in danger. So that's why clinically we think all the time how to augment tissues vertical. How to augment tissues vertical. In, in our book, Zero Bone Loss Concepts, uh, we, we just described it in very detail, as well as also in, during the courses we talk about if we have thick tissue so we can place implant equally with bone, maybe leave a little bit above the bone or suprastally and take very wide healing compartment. But then we have a tissues very thin vertically. So then we have to think about two possibilities, either to submerge implant, uh, place implant subcrestally uh, using two millimeter healing abutment uh, or, or just a narrow healing abutment to, to, to suture it around. Or if we are not able to place implant deeper, subcrestally, it's not possible. For example, we have a nerve there. So then we have to augment tissues vertical. The second thing, we think about soft tissues horizontal. Again, so different uh, materials we can use, like some substitutes or connective tissue graft from tuber, palate, superficial, or superpetillary one. This is, a, again, another question. Uh, and to place it uh, into pocket, like uh, in split thickness clap, partial thickness clap, or uh, elevating full thickness and place it at full thickness. So about this, I will uh, talk a little bit more in detail here. And now uh, the third thing is also we have to think about uh, uh, the width of keratinized and attached tissues. Okay. So, and uh, now uh, this is like, the thing, and usually what we hear and what we read in, in, in literature, that creating a keratinized and attached tissue, so we have to move a, a flap apically and transfer some graft from tubers, maybe like a strip one, very small one, again, maybe to use a wider one, tuber, superficial palate or superpetelial graft or some substitute using also can be used, etc. So these are like a three things. And today, today I would like to talk about horizontal soft tissue thickening, a uh, very simplified technique, just to make together increase soft tissue thickness horizontally, and just to do and increase a bit of keratinized and attached tissues. So perhaps you heard it already several times, or perhaps you are on the same wave and you are doing this. Uh, so we will repeat it. And, and uh, for somebody, maybe it will be uh, interesting tips uh, just to, to add something into your daily clinical practice. So um, this idea bo was born uh, with uh, several cases. And here I would like to tell you a small story and how this uh, investigation, how this trial bore, was born, this idea how it was born, uh, with uh, treating and uh, managing cases with very high atrophy in lower jaw. So from several patients, I realized that uh, if uh, we just go and, and, and uh, like a dentalist patient receives one, two, uh, two or four implants in lower jaw, in very high atrophic cases, when we have no alveolar, uh, alveolar bone uh, at all, then we have just like a mouth floor goes to a, to a vestibulum, like, like, like a flat, and almost no keratinized tissue, or maybe, or maybe just a, a very small line, like up to one millimeter. Uh, usually, uh, implants are placed and uh, tissues are sutured over, and after you go and do like uh, opening and second stage surgery, or you place implant and you leave with uh, healing abutment, so immediately. Uh, healing in such kind of cases was terrible. It was really very, uh, like, like not nice for patients. 
So that's why we just started to think about, okay, maybe we can place implants uh, flapless because in any case, there is nothing to preserve according to keratinized and attached tissue. It's nothing to preserve. If you place a flap less, okay, we lose keratinized tissue, but we have to, we don't have any keratinized tissue in such kind of cases. So maybe we place it flap less. We have less swelling, less uh, morbidity for patient. And uh, for soft tissue thickness, vertical, horizontal, and increasing keratinized tissue, maybe we can use some graft from tubing. So how uh, this idea of, of, of this topic was born, so the aim was like clinically evaluate and compare connective tissue graft from tuberosity ability to increase soft tissue thickness and keratinization potential after recipient air in either prepared using partial or full thickness flap in a dentulous mat. So as you can see here, very clear. So what, what, what and then how uh, were we thinking about this? So inclusion criteria was totally identical to patients. So we picked 10 patients like this uh, without any uh, alveolar bone and very, very small or even no uh, keratinized tissue. And uh, then we planned to, to place uh, four implants in between mental uh, for, for, for amen mentalis. 10 patients received uh, each patient four implants. It means it meant that it was 40, 40 implants. Yeah, planning was done with, uh, with, with, a, with a program, just uh, you know, like, like a regular uh, fully guided uh, surgery. And uh, after placement, lapless for implants, we then went for soft tissue augmentation. Soft tissue augmentation was done. So... Uh, a tuber, a soft tissue, and then connective tissue graft was taken from a tuber. We know that in tuber, we have very dense uh, collagen fibers, very dense connective tissue with a lot of keratinocytes that it can induce uh, keratinization. It can grow, it can, can change in, uh, over the time. So we know from, from histological findings from many, many years ago. And when we divided it into four pieces, uh, just having uh, like up to two millimeter in thickness, uh, six to eight millimeter width, and uh, five to six in a height. And one tuber, another tuber, so each two times. And then two implants on one side uh, were just formed uh, for, with a full thickness flap. It means that we wanted and, and go below periosteum, and on another two implants, we made a very gentle a pocket, just partial thickness, just leaving very thin gingiva above, uh, uh, above uh, uh, connective tissue. Usually in such kind of situations when we have uh, no vestibulum, so it's very difficult to do an apical position flap and suture something to, from, from side, uh, who works a lot, uh, perhaps agree with me that very often we see that tissue scope comes back and, and it's a different thing. So here we just decided well, without flap elevation, this drawing is a little bit uh, uh, not, not, not correct, right? We, we just didn't elevate the flap. We made just, uh, uh, just, just uh, pockets. But for two implants, uh, connective tissue graft was placed under the gingiva, or under very thin gingiva, above periosteum, and another one on the nuded bone, on, on the bone below periosteum. So this is a clear, this is like this. Okay, so very thin part here, and here periosteum was above the, uh, above the uh, graph. And then we took, took a measurements, how much recession did we have? Also, how much keratinized tissue we, uh, we have? and what soft tissue thickness on implant color was on baseline after two months of healing, after one year and three years after. And uh, yes, results, you can just uh, take a look in, in this big table, but I don't bother you just with analysis. Let's look to uh, diagrams. And then here we can see very clearly. So vertical recession average, right? So we got a thickening of... Uh, 
uh, tissues vertically in uh, just 1.5 millimeter on average. And it was no difference in both groups. So this, this line above line is a full thickness and uh, this was uh, not a full one, it is a split thickness. So, but it was similar. So no difference in between groups. As well as uh, soft tissue horizontal increase in thickness. Again, so in a baseline, two millimeter more after two months and a small grow over the time in both groups. Like so soft tissue tends to become thicker. It, it grew a little bit, but uh, with no difference uh, in both groups uh, where we just place it, right? And now keratinized uh, tissues, just take a look here. In the beginning, on average, we had like a half millimeter of, uh, on, on average, like let's put zero to one to, to one millimeter of keratinized tissue left. After two months of healing, so it was no big difference, but after one year and three years, we see completely different uh, diagrams. That in split thickness group, keratinization was more evident. What does it mean clinically? That in this case, when we place con uh, connective tissue graft from tuber, very dense, with a lot of keratinous sites, we, uh, uh, below very thin gingiva, we may expect some uh, keratinization. So this is like a clinical example. Just take a look here. No keratinized tissue on all four implants. And after already three years, we can see clearly increasing in keratinization, right? Here we have thick tissues, right? This is a, everything very clear. But here we see uh, increasing in keratinization. So keratinization of non-keratinized mucosa. So it seems, it seems that uh, here we have like a possibility perhaps depending on person to person, patient to patient of this density of con connective tissue graft from tuber uh, about, uh, about uh, keratinocytes inside and the ability to keratinize, but this is a small possibility. So where to use these old findings and then, or, or how to, to use it in clinical uh, daily practice, right? So what material, where to place it, and how? What material, first of all? So superficial tuber, uh, superficial uh, palate, or uh, uh, tuber, or some close to palate on the side, or some superpetelial connective tissue gland. So from histology, we know that the superpetelial has uh, less keratinocytes, less to tend to grow, and usually it shrinks. Superficial palate, or tuber or close is very similar, very similar. Tuber, of course, tends to grow more and keratinize more. Or we can take some allografts or some xenografts, some substitutes for them. Of course, they are able to increase soft tissue thickness, but we are not able to induce keratinization down low, of course. So we have different substitutes for that. And now where to place it, lower jaw or upper jaw? Like to just to use different uh, uh, like different features from this graft uh, the same feature from graft from tuber but placing it in a different area like superiostum or above periostum we may see just a nice thickening of soft tissue or some induction of keratinization so that's why that's why placing it in partial thickness we may benefit, especially in lower jaw, right? Because when you talk about aesthetic area and we place in superficial and make a split thickness, we may see keratinization. We may see uh, grow and uh, change in texture and color. So it will be not nice. But in lower jaw, usually we have lack of keratinized tissue and we need increase in soft tissue thickness and we need more keratinized tissue. So that's why in such kind of situations, making a split thickness flap and placing it on, into superficial area, after suturing it over or just leaving with some bottleneck. So I like this very narrow healing buttons very much together with uh, soft tissue grafting. So by having very thin tissues and doing 
soft tissue grafting only, we may benefit from it that we have a very nice, very stable soft tissue and our ceiling will be uh, fabulous, right? Our ceiling of uh, implant neck, of course, we need to make a nice design of a, of, of a crown, a very highly polished zirconia to get a good you know, epithelium junction with, with, with zirconia, with a crown. But this is like a fundamental thing, just having a beautiful, beautiful soft tissue thickness. Now, step by step for, uh, like, for, for the technique. Like after bone augmentation, so we, we can. Oops, I was lost. I see that something happened here. I hope uh, everybody stays connected and I share my screen again. Sometimes it happens with, uh, with, with uh, webinars, right? With the connection. So, so everybody I see it's here, so all good. We can go further. So, uh, technique, right? Technique uh, regarding this part. So, uh, we just having no keratinized tissue or just very, very small amount of it, we may do incision in mucogingival junction and to move all remaining keratinized tissue to uh, to buccal, uh, excuse me, to lingual side, right? To lingual side. And then to buccal side, we make a split thickness flap. We make a split thickness flap. And then we take connective tissue graft and to place in this partial thickness envelope part, and leave two millimeter above the ball. And to leave two millimeter above the ball. Secure it with mattress sutures and just simple suture sub. And leave it to heal. Of course, of course, here we may see some small margin of it. Never ever we have to allow to do it in aesthetic area, right? Because it, it may be not nice. But in lower jaw, and usually we we need more keratinized tissues in lower jaw. So we can do it. So it's important that here we will have like four or five millimeter of graft inside just to get a good nutrition, good blood supply, and to leave some two, three millimeter above the, uh, above the gingiva. And even having no keratinized tissue here, or just one or two millimeter, we may increase it. Yeah? Schematically, it looks like this. A little bit of... Uh, partial thickness and then envelope inside. And when securing it with a mattress suture, we can use also just like other suturing, so that's okay. Uh, just we need to follow all rules for soft tissue management. Very thin 6.0 suture material. It can be polypropylene, non-resorbable one. It can be also vicryl, asucryl, or polyglycolic acid, like resorbable one. It's up to you. It's, it's not, not so big... Uh, yeah, big, big uh, principle for that. Uh, what what you are familiar and what what you're using the most. But I like six uh, O polypropylene with uh, uh, just just uh, very gentle needle, just punctual needle. And yes, and now we get much more keratinized tissue on on this buccal side. So and this keratinization also increases, and when we uh, see a beautiful ceiling of it. One more case to share again. Here we have enough bone to place an implant, uh, but not enough, not enough of soft tissue. So again, uh, just leaving a little bit on, uh, or almost everything on lingual side in that area, and taking and uh, adapting a graft from buccal side, suturing it with mattress suture and simple adapting on top. So again, a healing and a beautiful emergence profile. So no bone graft was performed in that area. No bone graft, just soft tissue grafting. And this soft tissue increasing in horizontal soft tissue thickness 
and it maintains tissues vertical. So I repeat this mantra all the time, especially when we talk about aesthetic area, but now we concentrate today on, on lower jaw. So this thing like increase in horizontal, even we will have like no bone on the implant neck, like one, two millimeter above the above a bone. So it's no problem. We can leave it like this if we augment soft tissue. So no bone, very, very, uh, excuse me, no, no soft tissue thickness. And with a single surgery implant placement, uh, healing abutment, and uh, and connective tissue graft, we see a beautiful ceiling, and for sure, crestal bone stability remains also very stable. As I said, do not forget very nice uh, emergence profile. So our implant should be placed in an accurate depth, titanium base, and very highly uh, polished zirconia. So. This is our key to success and reduce our perimplantitis incidence by 10 times at least. Uh, two more ca cases to share about this topic again. So bone augmentation, uh, like uh, sausage using tenting. So this is, uh, again, a different story. But after augmentation, so we get a lot of bone, but not enough of keratinized tissue. And here we have two choices, right? We can just do a surgery now, just uh, make incision in mucogingival line and make an apical position flap. Or we can just open, remove uh, two millimeter healing abutments, place uh, normal healing abutments. Usually for such kind of fish, I'm using again bottlenecks, just a smallest one. And simultaneously, we can graft tissues from buccal side, leaving in lingual side as much as possible of keratinized tissue. And here we uh, we just craft it like this, also add something in between. You can see here, we leave a little bit in between as well. And we suture. So we have a very small line of keratinized tissues here. And now after healing, everything looks very stable. So it's okay already in between. It's okay on first implant. But it's not okay on uh, uh, the first and second molar. So we have nice thickness, but keratinized amount is not so not, not, not so high, right? And we have already this mobile gingiva here. But our connective tissue graft is already on site. So what else we perform here? We do very, very gentle, just a small anesthesia wear and incision, very gentle incision in mucogingival line and move a little bit to apical side and suture it with a, a sling suture, just very, very easy. So very gentle, no additional grafting because we did it already. So, and now we wait for two months uh, until it matures and we have a beautiful keratinization, right? It's because here, i come back a little bit just to repeat it. So here we took a uh, connective tissue graft from tuber, divided it at for one millimeter in each area. And now here we have a beautiful thickening, but we do not see over keratinization. Perhaps because our soft tissues are too thick or keratinization potential is not so high, or it's still not enough time because we wait just for a few months and, and it's not enough time for keratinization. We can leave it like it's just and wait for this keratinization. Or we just make it very nicely apical position flap, exposing this connective tissue and waiting for maturation of here. That's it. So we see a beautiful soft tissue amount, beautiful vestibulum, very stable. And uh, of course, after forming also uh, like cantilever area as well. It looks very natural and uh, a maximum what we can do uh, for, for such kind of situations. And this is again, uh, talking and twisted, maybe will be in the future uh, a separate lecture about how to develop a stable crestal bone after bone augmentation, especially after vertical bone augmentation. And uh, as far as I see here, it's all about soft tissue management, soft tissue uh, sealing, soft tissue uh, 
soft tissue developing of adequate thickness just to seal and close uh, from uh, and protect bone from oral uh, cavity environment. Post implant plays a major role with connection, stability, and uh, where, where this uh, micro gap is located uh, and, and uh, how big it is, etc., etc. Uh, and plus soft tissue thickness, it makes uh, our prosthesis and, and uh, the, the job like maximum what we can do. And final case to share, uh, this is very impressive one uh, because this is like a think and question, uh, how far we can go with soft tissue augmentation only? Can we leave, for example, two, three millimeter of implant, buccal implant exposed? And uh, in like such kind of situations, when implant is in between the other teeth, so in like an envelope, very often we can just open the full thickness flap. We can uh, drill our hole for implant, place an implant in adequate 3D positioning from vertical mesodistal buccolingual. We can take connective tissue from uh, tuber and just place this connective tissue, as you can see here, uh, around implant and gently suture it uh, over here. And... Uh, even our implant doesn't have uh, no uh, bone on, on, on buccal side. And uh, I know that uh, many clinicians uh, and, and especially uh, researchers uh, would argue that, oh, you have implant outside the bone, so it's a higher, uh, higher perimplantitis sensitive. I didn't agree, and I do not agree with this statement. Uh, I would add to the statement. It's... it's, it's it's not like a wrong in general of my with my opinion, but uh, it's it's you have to add we have more incidents for perimplantitis if we have our implant outside the bone if soft tissues are thin. If we have bone, but our soft tissue soft tissues are thin still, so there is no difference because if we have thin tissues, even having bone this bone will resolve with the time. So we have a more incidence with perimplantitis in both scenarios if our soft tissues are fit. And uh, again, opposite. If we have implant outside the bone, I mean not like a perimplantitis and leaving a half of implant out of the bone, but I, I talk about like a small gap of one, two, three millimeter when we don't know do we need to do soft tissue grafting or, uh, or bone grafting, such kind of situation. So as far as I see, and uh, as, as we follow uh, many cases like this for, for several years already, so this ceiling is uh, very, very good. And there is no difference. Do we have bone around implant neck or, ne or not from buccal aspect? From buccal aspect. So it's, it's very stable, very nice. Uh, as you can see here, there's no bone augmentation performed, soft tissues on. So uh, this was like a short webinar with very short message. It's a part of my, uh, from my uh, model one. And of course I did this uh, uh, free webinar just to show you and to, to uh, like encourage you uh, to visit me uh, to, to, to Vilnius, just in our, in our uh, clinic and our training facilities. So, and offer to you 30% uh, of uh, discount uh, in, in Model 1 course, which will be in August 22, 23rd. So, you can scan this barcode and get more information or just even register. And then this offer will be valid uh, 24 hours. So, it will be 30% off August 22nd, 23rd. So we will talk about each of, uh, pro from each of, uh, pro for, for each protocol for, each condition. So when we have enough bone and we need to develop tissues vertically, horizontally, and increase keratinase and attached tissues. When we have uh, just maybe just flatten the bone, to re re reduce the bone accordingly. Or we do simultaneous implant placement and bone augmentation or separate bone augmentation with big lateral defects or vertical bone augmentation. So I will just show you and uh, share my knowledge about 
how to develop very, very good and stable uh, bone around the implant and not to increase volume only, but how to get this quality of augmented bone. We want to have real beautiful bone, right? How to clearly define and do with soft tissue grafting with hands-on sessions, etc., just with soft tissue only. How to get a very uh, simplified way just to be effective in two surgeries. Does not matter, do we have a big defect or a small one? But the most important and what I like about this course is really the quality of bone. I think there is nothing to say when you see these uh, pictures. Or titanium meshes, just really vertical bone augmentation became so easy using uh, titanium meshes or simplified double grafting technique, what I, I, I will try to, uh, to, to explain you during the course. So please visit me. I'm really waiting for you. Or a second option is September 9 to 13. It's five days. So who is from far away from it? No, not to fly just for two days to Lithuania, but maybe you would like to join ITI course in Vilnius where we will have a Model 1, it's a lower jaw posterior area, and Model 2, implants in aesthetic area in a row, and of course, a lot of fancy activity, there, like uh, hot air ballooning, also biathlon. I, I do a lot of sport, and I am previous biathlonist, so we go to our shooting range, and we will do training and competition when in biathlon with a real rifles, etc., etc. And in aesthetic area, in the second model, I will go on again to different initial situations and to show very clear protocols when we have thick gingiva, thick bone, thin bone, but thick gingiva still, or thin gingiva, thin bone, or no bone at all in aesthetic area, or early pl placement with soft tissue grafting only, or with a horizontal and vertical bone augmentation. Again, just how to develop a beautiful emergence profile, how to get all the time uh, the same and very nice uh, aesthetic result does not matter what initial situation uh, we started with. So this will be like a second model who maybe just uh, will think about it. And also a big part of this will be uh, solving uh, different complications in aesthetic uh, with implants or when we have no papilla, how to augment it, how to develop, how to just save cases like this and how to build a beautiful papilla around, okay? So, August 22nd, 23rd, I'm waiting you in Vilnius. Uh, please contact us if you have any questions. Uh, or in uh, September 9 to 13, two models in a row, five days, with a really very nice team where uh, it will be very, very nice and amazing, uh, amazing events. So, this is for today. Maybe uh, do you have some questions? We can have a discussion easily. Uh, just uh, maybe 10, 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, I see somebody, somebody uh, just showed me and, and, and raised a hand. If you want something, please write a, a question in the chat and, and we can have some, 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 some small discussion here. So, uh, mm -hmm. so some questions. Oh, Valeria is right. Thank you very much for your new information. Uh, welcome, Valeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Marius is asking, thank you for webinar. If you leave uh, part of a graft exposed to three millimeter, uh, is this part left with epithelium or deepitalized? So uh, generally, there is no big difference. Uh, you can you can uh, leave this part what is exposed keratinized. 
So you can take a, a graft from tuber uh, very nicely with a part of keratinized tissue and place it uh, in, in, in the pocket and having beautiful keratinized layers so it's no problem you can do it like this. If you deapetalize it already or you have like very small part, no problem, you can do it also without keratinized, so it will keratinize anyway. So, anonymous attendee, would you rather choose free gingival graft or connect, connective tissue graft in split flap? Uh, so, normally I do in this sequence. So, I try to plan my implant correct to depositioning, and when look for the bone if I need to augment the bone here. So, and take care about the bone. And then uh, by placing implant, I take care about vertical soft tissue thickness. Second thing, I take care about horizontal soft tissue thickness. And if I can do it implant placement, subcrestal, let's say, placing healing abutment, so subcrestal, we already have enough, keratinite, uh, enough vertical soft tissue height, right? So we solved already the vertical soft tissue height. Now, by taking some tissue graft and placing it horizontally, we increase tissues horizontally and with a simultaneously, win, we can win also some keratinization, some keratinized tissue at all. So I just don't need to take, take care about keratinized tissue later. So it means that now I have already uh, soft tissue horizontal thickness and keratinized tissue. So there is no need to for further augmentation. If I have uh, a problem already with uh, some perimplantitis patients and we just reduced the uh, inflammation and there is no keratinized tissue, usually, yes, when I go for free gingival uh, graft or free gingival graft. Anna is uh, saying I'm good evening. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, Janice, hello, Janice. Thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, Sergey, so uh, I see in photo very small abutment like uh, Gamborena design. Uh, does Strauman uh, has something like this? Yes, this is like a bottleneck. Uh, this is not like Gamborena. I like Gamborena design very much. Unfortunately, uh, Strauman uh, does not produce it. Uh, I don't know why, and, and I was asking and asking them of that because more and more in the future we will go for uh, for uh, soft tissue grafting. So we need better and nicer healing abutment. So uh, now now we agreed with Strauman that I will help also to develop some other products together with them. So I hope I can influence them and just uh, also ask for for better designs of, of uh, healing abutments. So, uh, Anatoly uh, asking, you're saying thanks to for Benham. Hello from Ukraine. Hello, Anatoly. Back, a lot of wishes back to Ukraine. Uh, so, Elzaveta, thank you for this lecture. Do you prefer soft tissue augmentation simultaneously with implant placement or later before prosthetic stage? Uh, definitely simultaneously with implant because it's usually just one surgery. Or as you have seen in this one case, even we placed an implant, just, just imagine you augmented bone, just separately, augmented bone augmentation. And now you need to place uh, an implant. You place implant in correct depth. You just subcrestally. You have a, a vertical soft tissue line. And you take a graft and augment it horizontal. So increase horizontal and you solve this uh, uh, keratinized tissue uh, problem as well. If not, if not, then you need just third surgery, but very gentle, just a little bit apical position flat because you thicken it already and below your gingiva, flexible gingiva, this mobile gingiva, we have a thick connective tissue graft which will keratinize immediately. So it's like maybe two steps, but very easy one. So that's why during the implant place, definitely. And if it's not enough, then I repeat it later before prostep. Alexander, thank you very much for information. Please tell me uh, whether it's possible to use a graft from the tuber in the aesthetic zone. Absolutely, yes. I am using uh, tuber grafts all the time in aesthetic area as well. Just 
to be sure one millimeter in thickness, just one millimeter in thickness, not more, and place it below periosteum. When we are in aesthetic area, right? When we are in aesthetic area, it means that if you make a partial thickness, split thickness slab, partial thickness slab, it may over keratinize. It may change our color and, and uh, it will be and, and texture of tissues and it will be not nice. Okay, so you can do it easily, but thin and below periosteum. Mikhailo asking, thank you, Algirdas. As always, everything is good. Thank you very much. It's very nice. Has it ever occurred that uh, apical position flap is not enough on second stage surgery? You have to uh, replace it with, uh, with three gingival graft. Uh, I think uh, this, this question is if we make an apical position flap and it comes back. So uh, this is, uh, yes, it, it was like this and, and maybe not a single time. So I, I just explained this many times uh, and I needed to repeat it. But uh, just when I just wanted to solve all problem with uh, apical position flap without additional graphing. After, when, when I grafted horizontal like this and sutured and then positioned it like this, it doesn't come back. It keratinized very fast and uh, we have already thick tissues enough and it doesn't come back. Uh, of course, we have to think about the anatomy. So if we have very, very flat vestibulum, not deep one, so it may be needed that you uh, position it apically and still add some small, small uh, free gingival graft. It may be sometimes when you have very, very uh, shallow vestibulum and very big and, and uh, heavy muscles around. So it may be. Giuliano, uh, thank you for the class. Have any advantage to use a double layer of a biomaterial to have higher quality of keratinized uh, tissue? So uh, I don't get the question uh, right. So have any advantage to use a double li layer of a biomaterial to have a higher quality of keratinized tissue. Uh, double layer of biomaterial, you mean maybe to use some mucoderm or alloderm like this. Uh, so if, if the question is like to use like mucoderm for increasing keratinized tissue, we can do it, but we have to make uh, sure that all our uh, mucoderm will be surrounded with keratinized tissue. So it means that when we move tissues apically and we place uh, mucoderm, so here we have a small layer with keratinized tissue, but below there is no keratinized tissue. And then very, very uh, easy, the gingiva, like, like simple gingiva, uh, like layering gingiva will grow on that one. So that's why we need to make a strip technique like introduced by, by Istvan Urban. Like original Islam urban technique is a strip technique, like making a small strip, suturing it in, in, in a lowest part, and in between of keratinized tissue strip and uh, keratinized gingiva above, we can just suture when mucoderm, mucograft, uh, or, or, or alloderms or whatever we, we, we believe it in. I'm using mucoderm a lot and, and they have a very nice results, but usually I do it in, in upper jaw. For lower jaw, it's better free gingival graft in such kind of situation. Uh, if you talk about double layer of biomaterial, maybe double layer from tuber or or or, or palate. So this is uh, no need for that because if you make like a thicker uh, graft from tuber, so you will have some grow also, and it will be also over grafting. So one millimeter thickness is more than enough. If I, if, if I go, go, got the question right, but what we do had in, in, in me and Juliana. Uh, Roman, thank you for good presentation. Thank you very much, Roman. Hello, Samuel. Hello, greetings to Boston back. It's very nice. So, uh, Alexandus, hi, thank you. Election is amazing as always. Thank you very much. I, is it okay to use white abutment after placing implant subcrestally and using profile bore? or we will not get vertical soft tissue in this case, only with narrow healing abutment. Absolutely, yes. You place implant subcrestally, you flatten the bone, uh, you just remove with a bone profiler the exact amount of a bone, what will be 
have maximum up to one millimeter gap between your uh, wide healing abutment and bone. And when you will have a beautiful also ceiling in that area. So it's no problem about that. Uh, to use big, uh, big bow, uh, healing abutment or to use narrow healing abutment, it depends on how much bone do you have and how much soft tissues you have. Usually, I try to use in, in, in this uh, sequence. If I have enough soft tissue thickness, like keratinized tissues, uh, like horizontally, we have a lot because when we have a lot of keratinized tissue, a lot of bone, usually we move tissues to one side, lingual and buccal, and we have horizontal tissues also. We need to take care only about vertical soft tissue height. So it means if I place my implant subcrestally, I have already enough uh, vertical soft tissue height. I have a lot of soft tissues horizontally and keratinized tissue. So no need for any augmentation anymore. And of course, I will take a wide healing cover. If I have just very little of keratinized tissue, if I have very uh, uh, thin tissues horizontally, then I would like to augment it then simultaneously. And by taking very wide healing abutment, my tissues will be pushed around, away. So that's why I like very much this narrow bottleneck that I can just suture tissues like this and later after healing, like making like this, just, 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 just to uh, forming that. So Martinez, hello Martinez. Uh, thank you guys for having a question. What should be the healing time of bone augmentation with immediate implant placement and second stage keratini keratinized tissue augmentation? Or can we do it during same procedure? Of course, we can do during the same procedure and healing time when you take it takes uh, the longest time. So if it's smaller area, so I would wait for three months. If it's aesthetic area, I would wait for three months as well. So three months and you can do soft tissue grafting simultaneously. Uh, if uh, you have healed implant already, so for soft tissue healing, you need two months. So two months, it's enough for all kinds of soft tissue grafting techniques. Alexander, very glad to see you again. So hello, thanks for webinar. After soft tissue augmentation or after opening the implant in two-stage surgery, how long do you wait before fixing prosthesis crown? So uh, literature says that you have to wait, for example, also two months, yeah, because two months is needed for soft tissue healing. But actually, does this heal with healing abutment or you do in a one or two weeks, just making it very fast, your final crown and to place it. So I don't see it any problem. So usually we open and on the same day, we take impression or scanning and just proceed with final prosthesis. So and to fix it. And then you give a, a time to mature tissues and then to seal everything around. So it's, it's really no problem for that. So you can do it immediately. So I think that you, your, your suggested uh, thickening and keratinized tissue technique is very useful. Thank you very much. Does subcrestal implant placement alone keeps the tissues vertical think uh, long term? Absolutely. If you place tissue subcre implant subcrestally and you thin additional two millimeters uh, and uh, above you have, uh, let's say, very thin tissue, that's one millimeter. So it's a very nice ceiling. You have connective tissue around your titanium abutment and it's the best ceiling ever what can be. Absolutely, yes. Juliana, thanks, Professor. <laughs> Juliana, I am not professor yet. <laughs> I hope to be one day again, but thanks very much. Best regards to Brazil back. So very nice to be that you are here. Olena, uh, thank you for webinar. Thank you. The question is after bone grafting, if you have lack of vertical and horizontal amount of soft tissue, which one you will rebuild the first one and how? So after bone augmentation, I planning to place my implant. So it means that I place implant and usually after grafting, we have more bone and we try to place implant in correct 3D positioning from the occlusal plane. So I go usually subcrestal. So with subcrestal remodeling, we increase soft tissues vertical. So soft tissues will be increased vertically after we place implant subcrestal. So this is uh, a first step. Now I see, okay, 
do we have enough keratinized tissue or not? If not, my incision before implant placement will be more buccal and all tissues will be moved to to lingual side. And I place implant suppressively, so I win tissues high. And now I graft uh, tissues horizontally, simultaneously thinking about increasing keratinization as well. So, and after healing, if it's still not enough, then I think, okay, how to increase the keratinized tissue? So maybe I will move apically just uh, the flap and that's it. Or in very, very rarely, I will think about uh, transferring something from uh, from uh, the graft uh, just as a free gingival graft. Okay. So viral, thank you very much for information. Thank you very much for being here. Alexander, please tell me what allograft materials do you prefer? Uh, usually I am using Max Graft from Botis. It's a, it's a best one for me over 10 years already and I have fabulous results as you can see. Surrender, uh, thank you so much for very much informative session. Thank you very much. Regards from India, best wishes to India back. And Yuri, thank you for a good presentation. Thank you very much as well. So all questions so far, thank you very much. It was a very, very nice uh, session. So we are a uh, one hour round. And uh, yes, oh, somebody asked again. So what do you think about uh, this aloe bone? Uh, I, I cannot tell you because I have just very, very few experience with that. Uh, and uh, many, many years ago, maybe more than 10 years, I tried it. It was good, I think, but but I don't have much experience with this. Sorry. <laughs> Not, not, it's not possible to test everything in, 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 in a world. Okay, so guys, uh, thank you very much one more time and uh, really hope to see you uh, one day in some events worldwide. Uh, or of course, I invite you very much to visit me here in Lithuania in our models. So have a nice evening and bye-bye.